Namaste friends. In early 2020, the Ministry of Culture had set up a seven-member panel of the Archaeological Survey of India to locate the grave of the Mughal prince Dara Shikun, who was the eldest brother of Emperor Aurangzeb and was killed by him in the war of succession for the Mughal throne. But why is Government of India interested in this medieval prince? It is believed that Government of India wants to portray Dara Shukun as an ideal Muslim who died for Hindu-Muslim unity unlike his brother who is perceived to be a fanatic and admired by many Orthodox Indian and Pakistani Muslims. It is quite shameful that a democratically elected government is making its citizens look up to medieval princes and emperors who believed in one-person rule rather than inculcating the spirit of democracy among its citizenry. In spite of knowing that most Indian citizens are quite feudalistic in nature and they vote in the same pattern, the administration both at the centre and the state level is not doing anything to change the thinking of common nationals of this country. But for the time being, let us keep that argument aside and discuss whether Dara Shikho is, in the first place, worth admiring or not. I personally believe that if Dara Shukun would have been the emperor of Mughal Empire, the kingdom would have collapsed much before it actually did. Because just like in modern democratic countries, if one wants to call themselves as successful politicians, they had to win elections. They have no other choice. Similarly, during the ancient and medieval periods, when the most popular form of government was monarchy, one had to prove themselves in battles. If calling oneself a successful monarch was an ambition, or if one wanted to become a serious contender to the throne, otherwise you had to be content with being a vassal king of a more ambitious leader. Aurangzeb, even before becoming the emperor, had proven himself as an experienced general, was strategist and an able administrator. He was the governor of Deccan. On the other hand, Dara was the pampered kid of his papa and his papa made sure that he stays in the Mughal court most of the time. Even before the war of secession started, Dara went for only one war campaign and that is to recapture Kandahar, which is in present-day Afghanistan, from the Safavids or Iranians. Not only did he lose the war badly, he was welcomed by his father as if he had won a great victory for the empire and the blame of losing was transferred to other generals of the campaign just like today when a popular politician's son or daughter loses an election the fault lies with the subordinates also it is said that he took muslim fakirs and hindu saints with him which is so idiotic because was he going for war or to do bhajan kirtan Expanding the empire was the goal of any ambitious king or heir apparent. And you expand empires by winning battles and not by engaging yourself in meaningless spirituality or writing books or poems. Even Sri Krishna Devaraya, the king of Vijayanagara empire, was an accomplished poet and was devotional. His Telugu poem Amukta Maryada is still considered a great piece of work in Telugu literature, but he also knew how to win battles, unlike Dara Shukun. Shah Jahan had four sons, Dara Shukun, Murad Baksh, Aurangzeb and Shah Suja. It is believed that to avoid bloodshed among his sons, Shah Jahan proposed a truce and to explain it to Aurangzeb, he sent his daughter. So Punjab and its territories would go to Dara. Gujarat would continue to be ruled by Murad Baksh, Bengal would go to Shah Suja, the province of Deccan would be given to Aurangzeb's oldest son, Sultan Muhammad, and rest of the empire, along with the title of Buland Iqbal, an heir apparent, is to be Aurangzeb's. But fortunately, the experienced general like Aurangzeb declined the offer. Otherwise, the area of Punjab where most of the invasions happened in Indian history would have gone to an incapable man. And I don't know how many Nadir Shahs 
and Abdalis would have crossed the Indus River and looted our land again and again. Perhaps things would have been different if Dara's son Suleiman Shukun would have survived as he was an able general. In fact, he even defeated Suja during the War of Succession. If Dara would have waited for his son before engaging with Aurangzeb, things would have been different. But the crown prince was too vain. After the war of secession was over, Suleiman was captured and killed by his uncle. In a way, Aurangzeb is my enemy because he conquered the territory of Golconda Nawabs, the kings who used to rule most parts of present-day Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, or in other words, Telugu areas from where my origins are. And as far as I know, these Nawabs were better rulers than the Nizams. The first Nizam was the Mughal governor appointed by Aurangzeb. At least the Qutub Shahi Nawabs gave a lot of importance to Telugu language which the Nizams never did. And perhaps that is the reason why many old city Muslims in Hyderabad don't learn Telugu because they still have Nizam hangover and are snobbish enough not to learn my language. But still, I will reiterate, if Dara Shukon would have been the emperor of Mughal Empire, the empire would have collapsed much earlier than it actually did. Whether we like it or not, Aurangzeb was the most capable of Shah Jahan's sons. Capability has nothing to do with being good or bad. Even tyrants like Hitler and terrorists like Osama bin Laden were capable. So there is no point in admiring or fantasizing a loser like Dara Shukun. Thank you.